Hi everyone, Rescue the Perishing here. So we have another Daniel and Revelation study. So we are still on Daniel chapter 11 and we are doing part 5 of this study. So let us pray. Dear Merciful Father, we thank you Lord for the opportunity again to study your word. I pray Father for your Holy Spirit that you may help us to understand everything that we are about to read. I pray for all those who will be listening to this study. I pray, Father, Lord, that you may enlighten their understanding. And I pray, O oh God, that whatsoever we learn, Lord Jesus, we shall apply it in our lives when necessary. Continue to be with us, Father. Help us to understand history and how it plays a very crucial part in prophecy. So as we continue to go through this study, I pray, Father, that you may lead us and direct us into all paths of truth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So at this time, we will be covering another part of Daniel chapter 11. So we are on part 5 of this study. So at this time, we are resuming from verse 23. So let us take our Bibles, but first at this time, pause the video and we read Daniel chapter 11 for emphasis. And after you have done that, unpause this video and we'll be resuming from verse 23. So let us begin. Verse 23 reads, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people a reference text to this verse is daniel chapter 8 verse 23 so you can also read that but let us find out what this verse is, is telling us so one thing we have to keep in mind, we must go back before we move forward in order to understand this prophecy. So after we have read verse 23, the fulfillment of this is the Romans made a first league or the first league with the Jews. A league in this context is an alliance. Or a confederation. So I am reading a quote from the book Daniel and Revelation, which says, The decree of the Senate concerning a league of assistance and friendship with the nation of the Jews. It shall not be lawful for any that are subject to the Romans to make war with the nation of the Jews nor to assist those that do so. So he's just trying to explain the whole um, concept of the league. It continues by saying, neither by sending them corn or ships or money. And if any attack be made upon the Jews, the Romans shall assist them as far as they are able. And again, if any attack is made upon the Romans, the Jews shall assist them. And if the Jews have a mind to add to or to take from this league of assistance that shall be, that shall be done with the common consent of the Romans. And whatsoever addition... For whatsoever addition shall thus be made, it shall be the fo of force. This decree, say Josephus, was written by Eupolimus, the son of Joseph, and by jo Jason, the son of Eliza, when Judas was high priest of the nation. And Simon, his brother, was general of the army. And this was the first league by the Romans made with the Jews and was managed after this manner. So this was the confederation between the Romans and the 
the Jews. At this time, the Romans were a small people. And from this time, they began to work deceitfully. Now we are reading verse 24 of Daniel 11, which reads, And he, he shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the stronghold, even for a time. What we must understand all previous kingdom obtain riches by war, but not Rome at this time, which was speaking. Through peace, Rome possessed large providence. So it is saying that Rome will try a different method to gain what his father and his father's fathers have not done through deceitful through cunningness so we are moving on to verse 25 and when we go lower down we will understand exactly what rome conquered or what rome got so verse 25 it says and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a great, a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand. For they shall forecast devices against him. For they shall forecast devices against him. Let us try to understand. There was a great battle between Rome and and the king of the south, which we know as Egypt. This battle was the battle of Actimum. Let's remember the triumvirate was Mark Antony, Augustus Caesar, and Lepidus, which was formed to avenge the death of Julius Caesar. Mark Antony became the brother-in-law of Augustus Caesar by marrying his sister Octavia. But Mark Antony became a fallen prey to the deceptions of Cleopatra. He fell in love with her. Or he was infatuated by her. He finally rejected his former wife Octavia in trying to please Cleopatra. Now Mark Antony took over the affairs of Egypt and war broke out. Rome against Egypt. Mark Antony set up his ship at Samos, 500 ships of war. The king of Libya, Sicilia, Cappadocia, Paphaglonia, Comagena, and Thrace were there in person. And Pontus, Judea, Lacaonian, Galatia, and Media sent their troops to assist. Now Caesar Augustus display less splendor but more function. He had half as many ships than Antony and only 80,000 footmen, while Antony had 200,000 footmen and 12,000 horsemen. Caesar's mariners were experienced men, but Antony chose anyone. So he lacked function, right? Because of long preparation, they retreated for a year. When the season perm was permitted now, the armies were put in motion 
on both land and sea. Anthony's most trusted generals advise him not to battle by sea because of the inexperienced mariners. But he said an old proverb to them, which is, Whom God wishes to destroy, he first make mad. Amidst it all, Cleopatra advised immediate attack on the Romans. The battle was on the 2nd of September, B.C. 31, at the mouth of the Gulf of Ambrasia, near the city of Actimum. Now, Cleopatra saw the battle was looking dim, so she escaped where there was no danger. Now, Anthony saw this and blinded by passion for her followed and yielded the victory to Caesar. This marked the prophecy in verse 24. If you could reread that. Now let us read verse 26. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him. And his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. Now, Antony's defeat was really the abandonment of his friends and allies. Firstly, Cleopatra, who took 60 ships with her, then his land armies when, went over to Caesar's because they were disgusted by his infatuation towards Cleopatra. After his forces who guarded the front line were declared Caesar's. Then Caesar followed him into Egypt. And when Antony realized that Cleopatra betrayed him and his forces were all surrendered unto Caesar, he killed himself. Now this brings us to verse 27. Let's read. And both these kings' heart shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Now both Antony and Caesar were friends, but both of, their desire, both of them desire universal supremacy or universal power. Their friendship was built not on honesty, but on lies and hypocrisy. Let us read verse 28. Then shall he return unto his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. After Caesar returned from his victory against Antony, he came back with vast riches, many, many riches. A he, he kept a three days triumph. And after the overthrow of Egypt, he ventured on the expedition of Judea and the capture and destruction of Jerusalem. Thus, in the future, it did great exploits, the Roman Empire. Moses predicted the great calamities upon the Jews if they departed from God. And we know when we, we can study chapter 1 in the Great Controversy, the destruction of Jerusalem, that Jerusalem was under siege by Titus and, and fall in AD 70. The siege of Jerusalem lasted five months. And in that siege, 1,100,000 Jews perished and 97,000 were taken prisoner. That war 
lasted seven years and at the end 1,462,000 persons were said to have fallen victim. Now, I want you to go and look at the documentary of the whole issue of Augustus Caesar and Mark Anthony. And in that documentary on YouTube, you will see the whole, the whole event that took place surrounding Octavia and Cleopatra, Anthony, and Caesar's, Caesar, rather. And you will have a more clear understanding of exactly what was spoken in this lesson. Now, brethren, when I, I study this, this part, this part five, I see so many deception, so many cunningness, so many betrayals. And I can't help think about what will happen in the last days. We will realize that exactly what played out back then in BC 31 is exactly what will take place and more in gruesome intensity in the last days let us not be deceived brethren but let us study to show ourselves approved unto god let us uphold all of god's law and let us stand with jesus for when we study we will have a clear understanding of what is desired by god for us and we will live our lives more pleasing unto god by by obeying him let us not be like these people of old who have, have deceived one another through hypocrisy for worldly, worldly gain. But we recognize that we store up treasure not on earth, but we store it up where mud and rust cannot corrupt, where, which is in heaven, brethren. Let us live our lives pleasing unto our Heavenly Father. Let us accept Jesus into our lives before it's eternally too late. Let us surrender to him and let his will be done in our lives. I hope this part of, of our study was informative and that the Holy Spirit will make, made it clear to your understanding. But let us not just shut our Bibles. Let us continue to study. Let us go as I have encouraged you, go and research your history. So the whole, the whole event surrounding this, which we have spoken about, will be a little more clear to you. So next time, we will resume from verse 29. Now, after this study of Daniel chapter 11, we have one more chapter, which is Daniel chapter 12. And then we will move on to the book of Revelation. Now, God wants us to study these two books because it's very prophetic and profound for these last days, Daniel and Revelation. When we could clearly understand these two books, we will understand the time that we are living in and what we as a people ought to be doing. We have already went through the three Hebrew boys, how they stood and they did not worship that image which was set up. And even too, we are in this day and not to worship that the image that will be set up, it will not be a golden image, but it will be an image, the image of the beast with so wrong worship of the first day of the week. We have explored down in the lines and we recognize that when we stand up for God, God will stand up for us. And even if we are to be slain God be praised we have a understand about the the meaning going back to the the image the meaning of the image in Daniel chapter 2 I'm pushing it for we understand concerning the ram and the he goat we understand all these prophecies God has placed within his word for us to understand so we will not be blinded but that our eyes will be open to the truth. Let us continue to study God's word. 
for God's word is a treasure. Let us dig deep within that treasure. For digging deep within that treasure, we will be spiritually rich with wisdom to stand in these last days. So continue to do your, your personal study, not neglecting prayer. As soon as you open that Bible, let us pray. Because many open the same Bible because we did not pray for the Holy Spirit's interpretation, the right interpretation. We come up with all different interpretations of God's word, our own concept. But let us pray and ask God to really lead us and give us the right interpretation of his word. So again, friends, the opportunity is yours to continue to search, search God's scripture. For in it, 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 there is life, brethren. Father, at this time, I lift up all of those who are listening to this part 5 of Daniel 11 study. I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that their hearts will be open for truth. And that you will reveal unto them, O oh Lord Jesus, the mystery hidden within your word. Draw them, O God, for we know no man come unto you, least he is drawn by your Holy Spirit. Draw them, Father, and save their lives. Continue to be with us, Father. Even as time is winding down, help us, O Lord Jesus, to be filled with your Holy Spirit, just like that five wise virgins, that we will be able to stand, Lord, and be prepared for your marriage feast. Continue to be with us all. As we wait upon you, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Maranatha, friends.